Okay, so uh, good afternoon all. Uh, is it audible? Okay, uh, so uh, I, I think it's audible, huh? All of you. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 So yes, um, so welcome to the class and uh, today uh, we are going to cover one very uh, important concept uh, which is used in all the neural networks. Uh, so before that, if we can recall, um, uh, we have met uh, twice uh, in the yesterday class, uh, not yesterday, in the last class in the offline mode and uh, I think one class in the online mode uh, just before Saurav sir has left. Okay. And in the last few classes, if you can recall, uh, we are basically uh, understanding uh, how the neural networks are going to work. And uh, we have uh, seen these type of problems. So can you confirm that these type of problems, uh, uh, all of you have understood the concepts? Okay. Uh, suppose you are going to um, give the question that you have to identify the output of the neuron. So uh, this type of questions we have solved. Uh, can you just confirm? Uh, is it okay for this type of questions? Means what? What will be the answer? Uh, input into its weight plus x2 into its weights plus x3 into its weights plus x4 into its weights plus the bias, isn't it? Xi wi plus p. Isn't it the logic? No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What happened? Um, uh, there is this one puja, na, Saraswati puja. You should be charged up with the blessings of Ma Saraswati or not? Yes. No. No. <laughs> or have you taken your lunch or not? No. Okay. Um, uh, I, I think uh, you, you should now plan from now onwards that by 1.30 you should be ready. Okay. Uh, because we are having two classes in the online mode and two classes in the offline mode. Online mode classes are today and Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday. And offline around Wednesday and Thursday. And this time we are having two offline classes. Okay. So no need to worry. Uh, yes, um, so this type of questions, uh, I, I, I hope that all of you can easily solve. Okay, uh, if one, this type of simple neural network will be there and there will be multiple branches uh, which are present. Only one thing you have to do, you just multiply x1, xi into wi. Okay, uh, then uh, we, you just with this, you add the bias. Okay, and after this, if you are going to do the summation, you are going to get 0 0.72 done uh, is it okay or should i explain this thing again no or yes dibya is it okay have you understood this logic yes sir okay pinky a pinak rai uh, nikki are you there rasmita uh, uh gaurav behra are, are you all present, Ria and all? Okay, okay. okay. See, uh, if you are not able to follow, we can take four offline classes. But uh, the point, whatever I am speaking, you should able to follow. Otherwise, there is no meaning of putting all these efforts. Are you getting? You just decide among your friends, you, whatever you want. Now it is two online, two offline. If you want three online or three offline, one online, that's okay, fine. Or four offline, your choice. But uh, the concept you should understand because you are CAC students and AI is the very um, uh, domain in which you are going to work, all of you. Okay, so you just inform me in this Wednesday class, whatever your plan, are you able to follow the whole logic or not? I am assuming that this concept all of you have understood. Now the same question, I am just uh, a little bit uh, extra thing has been done that there is a sigmoid activation function which has been used. Okay, so in this case, what I'll do, I'm just going to do all the weighted summation up to this point. Okay, and whatever this output, it will pass through the sigmoid activation function. 
okay and uh, in this case uh, this summation is becoming 1.28 it will pass through the sigmoid so the sigmoid it will be 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus 1.28 and this is the output so basically two things uh, there is a neuron okay in neuron different branches are coming and after that here we are doing the summation and the output is actually passing through the activation function through the activation function we are getting the output okay this is the whole logic which we are doing in all the neural networks and actually this uh, logic is very similar to the biological neural network means this artificial yes, neural network is quite similar to the biological neural network that's why the name we are giving is a ann now uh, continuing our uh, uh, topic further uh, we have uh, now in this class we are going to discuss a very important algorithm which is known as the back propagation algorithm and we'll try to see what is this back propagation algorithm and how uh, this is going to uh, help or how uh, this is actually working so uh, if you can look into this back propagation algorithm and find out its history that it is uh, one of the very widely used algorithm in the neural network if you are taking ann also it this is used if you are talking about cnn this algorithm is also used and this has been uh, developed by the bunch of researchers uh, here bryson uh, the verbos uh, lekon and all these persons have developed and finally in uh, Rumelhan, he has found out uh, the uh, the whole structure has been designed in this 1986. I have just searched this algorithm and found out that how significant this back propagation algorithm in the year 2023. I think all of you are familiar with this term called a Google Scholar, isn't it? Google Scholar is the place yes, where, where we can find all the researches which has been done previously and how effective one research is or all the authentic data we can find out from here and there i have searched that is this algorithm relevant now and i found out in 2023 this year many algorithms uh, have many uh, networks have used the same algorithm and these are the recent papers these are the papers so cnn they have used and I found out the history that this is the paper. If you want, I can share the paper after the class in, in the group. This is a very basic algorithm which I'm using. And uh, this is the citation, this is the PDF link which I'll share. And uh, this algorithm has been cited 31,000 times. Means the weightage of the algorithm is very high. The citation means uh, till now, everyone is using that algorithm, just like a revenue. Means so if you use your algorithm, if suppose your one algorithm is designed by Subasri or Zahid, and I want to use that algorithm, I have to cite that this is not a uh, just copy. I am authentically taking your data and I'm using. So this algorithm which was designed has been so popular that 31,000 times this has been used. So it's a very high number and a very um, uh, the this proves itself that it is a very popular algorithm and uh, it is uh, used till now. Okay, let's go further. So uh, wh what is this algorithm actually doing? See the algorithm it doing is that this is the basic structure of a neural network. Do you agree, all of you? In in a neural network, there will be a input layer. Okay, there will be an output layer, and in between there are some hidden layers. This type of structure have you seen? No. This type of structure have you seen or not? No. This is one simple neural network. No, just I have shown you. What we are doing? We are taking these these inputs and connect it to one neuron. So instead of one neuron, you take multiple neurons. So what will happen? One branch will come here. One branch will come here. One branch will come here. Second case, one will come here. One will come here like that. If I'm going to do the connection and this is one layer. Okay. After this, the second layer. After this, the third layer. If this type of connection I'm doing, then this is our a, a very practical neural network. And here you can see at the input, there are three nodes. At the hidden layer, there are four neurons. Second hidden layer, there are four neurons. And at output, there is a one. Uh, 
can you confirm that this structure is familiar to you? Nothing new? Sir. Can you un un unmute and speak? Sir, familiar. Yes, sir. Familiar? No, this all of us know. So who can tell me uh, why one layer is called as a hidden? Very simple question. Hidden means, Are Baba, if I'm looking from this side, from this side, suppose one person is coming and uh, want to see from here. So what he can do? He can only see the input layer. One person coming from the right hand side, he can see only the output layer. These two layers are not visible. So that's why we are saying it as a hidden layer. Isn't it? Very, very simple concept. Okay. Now uh, see the connection, how the connection we are doing. The connection is done in this way that this neuron is connected to all this input is connected to all the branches means all the neurons so from this one uh, means from this input four outputs are taken are you getting similarly from the second one from the second branch similar connection second branch this is first connection this is second connection this is third connection this is fourth connection are you getting like this it is connected like here one two three four four connections Second case from the second. Are you are you following this type of connections, all of you? Yes, no. sir. Yes, sir. I am showing you. Suppose these are two networks. This is the input. So what I will do? That I will take first uh, input will be connected to here. It will also be connected to here. Suppose there are two inputs. So two input means both of them will be connected there. Both of them will be connected here. Suppose after this, there, there are three neurons. So what I will do from the second neuron, again, all of them are interconnected. One branch will go here. One branch will go here as well as one branch will go here. Similarly, from the second neuron, all are interconnected. This to this to this. That means each neuron has a connection to the next neuron. Not, not separate connection. Each of them are internally connected. Okay, suppose I, I, I think now, uh, you've got the idea that in this way, they are interconnected, fine. So now, okay, fine, uh, the interconnection is there, but uh, because of this interconnection, what is the problem? Why we, what, why we need this algorithm? Okay. So that, yes, Ayush and Gunjan, please, Avinash and Gunjan, uh, mute your mic. Okay. okay, now see what I am doing. So whenever this type of neural network we are working, okay, there is a very uh, important term which is coming here at the out, okay? and that term we are calling it as the error. Okay. So what is the meaning of error? As you have done in the uh, one one example in our uh, offline class, can you now tell me what is the meaning of error? Suppose I'm having one neural network and I want to know what is the meaning of an error. So the difference between the actual value and the value found out. One student is saying uh, that it is actually the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. That means whatever uh, Suvasri is saying, she is saying that if I'm using a neural network, suppose the, this is my neural network, okay? Some input I have given. Suppose I have given input 0, 1, 0, okay? And its output should come as 1. But when while doing the whole calculation, I am finding that its value is coming as 0 0.9. So what I'll do, I'll do 1 minus 0 0.9 and I'll say that, okay, 0 0.1 is the error, isn't it? Error is actually the difference between the actual output minus whatever output I'm getting from my network. If there is a mismatch, then there is an error. If there is no mismatch, that means my neural network is working properly. Do you agree with this, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. okay, fine. So now look into this. What is the problem we are going to face in this type of network? The first problem we'll face that, okay, you do the calculation, you do the weight updation and all. You do this thing. You do all this calculation. Here at the output, I can easily do because suppose this is the Y predicted and from this side, it is coming the Y actual, okay? And I am doing the plus minus thing here. 
So this will be yp minus y actual. Okay, and I can find out the error. This error calculation, I can do it easily, but the weights are present here. There is some weight W1, W2, W3. Here, there are some weights V1, V2, V3. Here are some weight Z1, Z2, Z3. Are all these branches are having certain weights? No. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are having some weight. So, how to know? Okay, this branch I can easily update. This branch I can update because I am having the reference of this error. Whatever error calculation has been done here, I can do. But what about this branch? There is no error calculation. Means this error is no how directly related to this branch. How to update the weights? Similarly, this error is this directly is not related to this branch because the error which I have calculated is only at this branch output means can i say that uh, this error whatever i am doing calculation is between the hidden layer 2 and the output layer here i have calculated the error but what about the error between hidden layer 1 and hidden layer 2 what about the error between the input layer 1 and uh, hidden layer 1 are you are you following my logic how to how to calculate how to update the weights i need some reference no if uh, the weights are not going to be updated. I can say, okay, every weight is fixed. If I am going to update the weights, I need certain reference for these middle layers. Don't you think? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me, if you are not able to understand, let me give one more example. Suppose um, uh, 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 all of your uh, six same students now. I am uh, talking about a scenario in twenty twenty five. Okay. This is student one. Uh, there is one more network, which is student two. This is one uh, network, student one. And student one has got 15 lakhs package. Okay. And student two is still unemployed. Okay. So what, so what is the meaning of this student one is getting 15 lakh and student two is unemployed. The meaning is, means all of them have passed through the same thing. He has also done the 10th class. He has also done the graduation and all these things but the weights which are associated with the student one the weights here w1 v1 z1 are properly tuned so that one student is successful but for the other student there are some error there are some error in the uh, weights that the weights are not proper so that's why the second student is not getting successful are you getting my logic have you heard uh, in, there are two, three very old universities like Nalanda University, like Takshila University, which are present in the East India, one of the oldest university of Asia. Have you heard those names? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, yes, now, sir. but now where are they? The university has vanished. Because why? Because the weights or the uh, method or the style or the outputs, whatever the weights basically are not been properly updated so that whatever the course those were provided some 1000 years back are not relevant now but oxford university is relevant till now are you getting my logic so can i say in this way so suppose from this university one student is not getting successful so what what should i do taking this examples taking this student's failure I should update the weights. I have to identify, okay, the student is a failure. So in which, which weight? Suppose this is semester one, semester two, semester three. I found out that the semester three, the student is not able to perform properly. So what I'll do, I'll take these weights W3 and I'll tune it properly. Are you getting? Suppose I have found out in 12th class in this 10th to graduation, somewhere the weight is not properly tuned. So what I'll do, I'll again tune this weight so that when the next time one more student is going to come, he's going to be successful. Isn't it? That's the meaning of the adaptive system. Ah, the weights are not fixed, but each time I'm going to update the weights. Are, are you getting the simple analogy, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes. But now the question is, what is the reference for the middle layers? Because middle layers, I don't have any reference of the actual output or the predicted output. Because the actual and predicted thing is basically happening 
actual and the predicted thing is basically happening only at the output layer. So there is no way error can be found out here. So we are designing this algorithm by which whatever error we have calculated is going to back, back propagate. Means it will going go back in this direction. The same error again going to the left hand side. Again, the same error will move to this branch. So this type of error back propagation means this error is going to back propagate from here. Same error is going to back propagate. Again, it's going to back propagate. So this type of thing is basically called as the back propagation of error. And some uh, logic I am going to show you means this error is going to move backwards. It's going to move backwards one by one. From one layer to another, it's going to move backwards. And means whatever the output is present, error will move here. From there, the error will move here. From there, the error is going to move here. And when the weights are again updated, again, I'm going to do the calculation, find out the error. If the error is not satisfied, if error is not less, again, I'm going to do the back propagation. Are you getting my logic? So, little bit, are you able to understand why the name is called back propagation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now you can tell me. Uh, the previous calculation, whatever I have shown you in the beginning, beginning, this, this one small example which I have shown. So can I say that this algorithm which I have shown you, this calculation which all of us have done, here only the forward propagation is there. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Forward propagation means from left hand side, weights are there, it's coming and it's the output. Back propagation means now you are going to calculate the error. The error is going to move back and you do the weight adjustment. So can I say that neural network work in both directions? One is called as the forward pass. One is called as the backward direction or the back propagation of error. If I'm going for the forward pass or the forward calculation, I can find out only the output. If I want to do the adjustment of the weights, I have to do the back propagation method. But which one is back propagating? The error is going to back propagate. Are you getting, are you getting my point, all of you? Yes, sir. Okay, or should I repeat? No. So now onwards, whenever I'm going to analyze the algorithm, I'll do it in two ways. One analysis I'll do is for the forward propagation. Another analysis I'm going to do is for the back propagation. Fine. So to understand clearly the back propagation algorithm, this paper and all the things where I've given you the motivation and all. So these three, four things all uh, we have to be, our fundamental has to be clear then only I can understand the meaning of this back propagation algorithm. One thing I need, that is the gradient descent algorithm of weight updation. You may have heard this name, but again, I'm going to cover. Second, what is the meaning of a chain rule, which is used in algebra? Have you heard this chain rule in algebra, your basic algebra? Okay. After the yes, sir. Okay, after the chain rule, uh, there is a little bit we are going to understand the activation function. In the activation function, we are going to mainly cover the sigmoid activation function here. Others also we can take. And then we are going to see uh, step by step how the error can back propagate. Okay, so uh, starting with this, I mean, so what is the goal of this uh, three, four classes is clear to all. Uh, the goal is how this back propagation thing is working. Okay, and uh, because uh, this algorithm is so popular, so uh, I'm going to give some uh, good amount of time, at least three, three, four classes so that you can understand this whole concept clearly, as well as the coding we are going to do. Will it be okay? Because if I'm going to do it superficially, you, you may, may not follow the whole logic. So I am taking the prerequisites and then I'm going to do the calculation. Or uh, have you heard uh, this algorithm is taught in any other subjects of your uh, branch? Then I can skip. No. Okay. No, no. Fine. 
So uh, let me uh, start with the first prerequisite. Okay. And that is called as the gradient descent method. So what is this gradient descent method? This is a very popular method when I am going to update the weights. So what is it? So as I've told you um, that there will be a simple neural network. Okay, there will be a simple neural network. This is my neural Excuse network. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. So uh, I have a doubt that you said there are hidden layers in the, like uh, yes. there is output layer and this input layer. What if there are more number of hidden layers then will will it will be so difficult for us to back yes. it and check everything? Yes, that's why the error uh, algorithm is so challenging and powerful, no? I, I'm not thinking that someone has done it in 70s and 80s, still we are reading it. Means what? The algorithm is sufficiently intelligent enough to deal the uh, error and all. That only I'm going to uh, discuss in these two, three classes. Means I'm going to prove you that how the error will back, back propagate. You can imagine, suppose error is here, okay? Suppose the error is here, okay? How much yes. error error will move here? Means suppose the error is 100%, okay? Here it should move 20% of the error should move here. Some 30% of the error should move here or some 50% of the error should move here. Is it it? Are you getting? Yes. Suppose a student is uh, not able to perform well. That means some problem is there in his, in his 10th grade. Some problem is there in the 12th grade. Some problem is there in his graduation. So I have to check that at which point, how much error is contributing. Then only I can rectify that. Otherwise, how to do? So yeah. in, in which ratio the error is going to propagate, that only we are going to do here. There may be hundreds of hidden layers. That doesn't matter. In CNN, there are hundreds of layers. But we are going to formulate a simple logic. Okay, that logic will be applied. If the number of layers are increased, the number of calculation is also going to increase simultaneously. Are you, are you getting? Okay, sir. So, but can we say that it will be easier when we come to the code or the logic part? We can iterate it, but you are saying there will be different proportions of it. Yes, that proportion we are going to find. Okay. okay Means, if, see, if, if you can understand for three layers, at which proportion the distribution is happening. I can apply the same logic into the next 10 layers. No? Are you getting? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's take at least one or two hidden layers and do the calculation in pen and paper and try to identify that what is happening. If we can say that, okay, uh, the three layers, pen, paper calculation and the code are matching, then I can simply just copy paste the formula and uh, just uh, iterate it more number of times, isn't it? That's the meaning of the machine learning. No, understand yes. the logic. You just replicate it. You're getting. Okay. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. So to understand this whole thing, the first algorithm all of us need to know that is known as the gradient descent method. What is this gradient descent method? As I am telling. So the gradient descent means that. Whenever uh, uh, there is some uh, of this uh, uh, adaptive system is working, suppose this is a neural network, some input is coming, some output is going, this is the actual output, this is the predicted output, this is the actual output and there is an error. The error is going to given back to the input so that the weights are going to be updated. But how much the weight should be updated? It is written that the uh, or this uh, formula is this that weight new w i new equals to w i old plus alpha into delta i okay what is this delta i this is the change in the weight what is this alpha alpha is the learning rate are you getting my point we have done one example on that uh, on that um, uh, i think on wednesday uh, we have taken a simple uh, two input logic gate and we have taken first input find out the error Second input, find out there like this one one updation we've done. No, I, I, can can you recall the Wednesday class? Okay. Yes. Sir. Similar thing, similar thing we're doing. But now the question is, okay, you change the but how much should be my del w? What's the logic? How much should we take? Are you getting my point? So the logic is that you do this type of error calculation first. Uh, just tell me one one step you are able to follow or not. Step number one, that the error is basically the target output T minus the actual output. Do you agree? 
target means which is already present actual output means uh, means no no not the target output minus uh, this thing will be the predicted output sorry i have not written one let me change it target output minus predicted output do you agree now isn't it okay now uh, 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 some some students say sir okay we are going to take predicted minus target okay so then the error will become negative so to get rid of the negative error so can i take square t minus y square so that negative and positive things are same are you getting and what is the yes. mean uh, what is the mean square error that you take the error okay and you find out its average average means see uh, one example we have taken that there are four number of rows okay uh, on that gate okay suppose the first case the error has come 0 0.7 second uh, row you have given the error has come 0 0.5 third row you have given error is 0 0.3 next time you get 0 0.1 so what is the error you just take add them divide by four are you getting that is the meaning of mean no that is the meaning of mean or that is the meaning of average so the term is mean square error so what is the meaning of square means whatever the difference between actual minus predicted square i am taking mean means for all the observation in that row i am just dividing or finding the average value do you agree no please tell yes, me sir. please tell me this this slide you are able to follow this slide you are able to follow that first there is the error is t minus y then i am taking the square after taking the square i am finding the mean and this i am writing as mean square error and this type of symbol i am doing uh, this is for the mean square error so let us take an example for this uh, linear classification linear classification means what linear classification means just one second linear classification i think uh, just one second uh, uh, let me show you this thing. I think uh, you know oh, this this type of thing is meaning of the linear classification. Na? Can you remember linear classification? Yes, some some of the things are present. Some this is my class A suppose. This is the blue color. Uh, this is class B, which is the yellow in color. And you draw a simple line, simple straight line, linear line. Okay, linear thing. I am drawing. And what this line is doing, this line is working in this way that uh, whatever on the left side of this are class A, right side of this are class B. So what I'm doing, let's take a linear uh, classification and linear classification means I'm taking Y equals to MX plus B. And in this case, I'm taking Y equal to WX plus B. W because uh, it can correlate with the neural network. That's why I'm doing it W plus B. Okay. So now, uh, which two are changing in this uh, y equal to mx plus b? Suppose th this is one uh, layer. Okay, this is y, this is x. Okay, so how this graph can change? Who can tell me? Suppose I want to check this graph to this point. I want to make this graph to this. So which two are two are variable? One is slope. One is this b. Don't you think? this is a very basic method. Yes, sir, yes. Suppose I want to change the shape. What I have to do? Either I have to change the value of M or I have to change the value of C, which is constant. Then only the graph can move left and right. That means, can I say that if some error is coming in this linear classification, suppose some error is coming in this linear classification, maybe uh, the graph, which was, maybe the line which was drawn in this way, so I have to shift the graph little bit to the right. Then only I can say the proper classification is possible, isn't it? How to shift from left to right? I have to change the value of M, don't you think? So, yes. so, so if the error is coming, that means what? The M value is not proper or the B value is not proper. Not clear. If I'm drawing this line X and Y, X is the input. These are x1 and x2. Inputs are not changing. Na? Inputs are fixed. Means data set is fixed. Suppose this is feature 1, this is feature 2. Only the thing is going to change is the how 
this line is going to move. It is in this way, it is on this way, it is on this way, it is on this way. And this movement of this line is only possible. Either I have to change the value of M or I have to change the value of B. Okay, now I think it's clear. So I'm moving further. So if I'm finding the error, error means this psi equals to T minus Y square. Okay, out of which T is a fixed value, don't you think? T is the target. No, target is fixed. Yes. So can I say the error is basically y square in a simple square term. So if it is a square, that means the error is like this. No. If I you plot the square, no, x and fx, x and x square, minus 2, 4, uh, 1 and 1, if I'm going to take a simple square plot, isn't it? This side there will be x. This side there will be x square. No. Yes, sir. Okay. Now here you tell me wh wh where is the minimum point? Minimum point is this? Yes, yes sir. Yes. So that means if I'm taking a square graph, means error is a square and I have to find out the minimum value then this algorithm is going to come. Okay, I think now you are getting a little bit hint that why uh, the shape of the error is always a bowel in nature or always U-shaped in nature. Anyway, uh, we are just running